welcome back to the MOOC course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing snubbers and uh, we had uh, done the derivation for under damped, over damped and critically damped cases for RC snubbers. Now let us summarize all those results and let us look into it that how we can use those results for snubber design. So to recall back uh, this was the circuit that we were using this is your RC snubber and this is the parasitic inductance and uh, these were the basic waveforms uh, using which we had done the derivation and these were the important terms your alpha which is the ratio of RS by 2 LP omega 0 is the natural frequency damping ratio zeta which is alpha by omega 0 and your initial current factor which is the ratio of uh, your square root of uh, inductors initial energy by your capacitors uh, final energy and it turns out to be equal to IRR by E root over of LP by CS. So, this is uh, the result that uh, we have obtained by doing the derivation. So, for uh, zeta uh, less than 1 so that means this is your underdamped case under damped case uh, this is the normalized uh, your peak voltage expression that we had obtained. So, this uh, has this function f and this is a little complicated function uh, which in terms of zeta and chi is uh, given as this and uh, then uh, further uh, you multiply this by root over of 1 minus 2 zeta chi plus chi square and here we have got an, an exponential term. So, uh, this is uh, denoted as uh, the function p of uh, zeta and chi and then we had uh, obtained uh, this dv by dt average which is equal to E1 by T1 that means the rate of rise to this peak voltage E1 because this E1 is attained at the time T1. So, this uh, can be written as this which has this function p and uh, which is uh, then multiplied with root over of 1 minus uh, zeta square by tan inverse of this function f uh, which is noted down here multiplied by the natural frequency and the blocking voltage E. Then uh, we uh, have obtained this for over damped condition that is zeta greater than 1. So, that uh, E1 by E is denoted as the function of as a function Q and uh, we see that it is uh, similar only thing is now here tan is replaced by tan H and this F is replaced by G and this F and G are basically same only difference is that uh, in F it is 1 minus zeta square here it is zeta square minus 1. And this dv by dt average which is your equal to E1 by T1 this is also similar uh, for the case of under damped condition only difference here is this this is again here is zeta square minus 1 instead of 1 minus zeta square and this is tan h instead of tan and f is replaced by g and f and g we saw that it is actually similar and p and q are also actually similar only thing is this is your tan h and this is g. Then um, we obtain for critically damped condition the expression so this is what uh, we had found out that this turns out to, to be equal to 1 plus 1 minus chi e power of minus of uh, this 2 minus 3 chi over 1 minus of chi and uh, this dv by dt average which is equal to e1 by t1 this also we had obtained. And uh, what we see is here this is actually a repeat of uh, this. So, if you want to write it again as uh, call it as something and then want to show it in a compact form you can write that and this multiplied by actually inverse of this which is 1 minus chi by 2 minus of 3 chi multiplied by this omega 0 e. So, this is the summary of the results that we had obtained. Now, we can do the snubber design in two ways. One is that we can have the objective of uh, limiting this uh, spike voltage E1 the peak voltage. So, we can first do the design by using these equations. So, for that what uh, was done was that these were 
plotted, these functions were plotted with respect to this uh, damping factor zeta with chi as the parameter. So, what we are doing is that uh, you substitute, you put for zeta, you keep on varying zeta and you select one value of chi and uh, then you uh, find out uh, what is the corresponding uh, value of uh, this function p for uh, zeta less than 1 and we keep on varying it and we can keep on plotting it. Then uh, when zeta becomes equal to 1, we use uh, this function uh, to obtain the value. Then when zeta becomes greater than 1, at that time we use this function to obtain the values in plot. After that what we do is we change the value of chi, we take another value because chi is being used as a parameter, change the value of chi, redo it, start varying zeta from 0, then up till uh, 1, then uh, at 1 we use this equation and then greater than 1 we use this equation to obtain the values and we keep on plotting it. So, when you do that these are the curves that you will be obtaining. These are the nature of the curves that you will be obtaining. So, this is for your up till here zeta less than 1, then this is at zeta equal to 1 and over here this is zeta greater than 1. So, we use all those 3 functions to do the plotting and this is for different different values of chi. This is for chi equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.41 and then this is chi equal to 2, 4, 6 and 10. So, like that we plot it. So, once uh, we have plotted it, uh, what we observe here is that, that at a certain point uh, these curves have got a minima. So, here over here these are becoming minimum. So, we see that these are the points where your uh, for this particular value of uh, your skies you are the E1 by E this normalized peak voltage is becoming minimum. And so, we can also note down the corresponding values of E1 by E and let us denote these points as E1 by E0. And correspondingly this we can call it as I0 and whatever is the value of uh, zeta that we are obtaining let us call this as zeta 0. So, like this also we will be obtaining another values uh, set of values of zeta 0 and E1 by E0. So, we note down all these points and we can make another plot and that plot what we do is that we plot it with respect to this initial current factor chi 0. So, that and whatever values of zeta 0 we noted down for the minima point this is what the nature of the plot we get and we also plot for those corresponding E1 by E0 terms and this is the plot that we are going to get. Now, these uh, same two the zeta 0 and chi 0 that we had obtained at the minima point what we can do is we can substitute those in these expressions and uh, obtain the corresponding values of dv by dt average and that we can call it as dv by dt 0. And since we want everything to be normalized, so um, if you normalize it then we have to divide it this 0 by omega 0 e. So, then uh, we use uh, these expressions whatever is this part that much part can be used to obtain the normalized plot of this one dv by dt 0 pi omega 0 e. So, that is uh, this plot that is obtained. So, now this is the plot then that is used to do this number design for um, optimum, optimum snubber design for minimum voltage spike because these are the chi 0 and zeta 0 points at which your minimum spike voltage is obtained. So, 
then for that what we do is first you estimate your IRR and LP you should have an idea of it I already said in the derivation it was assumed to be known. So, you should have an estimate of it for your circuit. Then you have to find out E which is usually very well known in for the converter. Then you have to choose an E1 you, you decide what is the spike voltage to which you want to limit it uh, depending on your device and you calculate this normalized ratio E1 by E and you find out that value on this plot and the corresponding values of uh, zeta 0 and chi 0 is what you are supposed to obtain. So, let us say this is the value that you have chosen and so corresponding to it this is the value of zeta 0 that you get and corresponding to that this is the value of uh, chi 0 that you obtain. So, these two values then you use to do this number design. So, what you do is that you uh, then um, while you have obtained these two zeta 0 and chi 0 you use these two expressions uh, this is C s equal to L p into IRR by E chi 0 square and we have obtained basically from this expression of chi only rearranging it we obtain this expression. And uh, similarly for uh, this expression also R is equal to 2 zeta 0 root over of L p by C s this also you can um, uh, use it and this again is uh, just a rearrangement of the equations that we have used uh, before ok for your zeta 0 and chi 0 and uh, just to do some rearrangement and substitutions this is what you can also write it as 2 zeta 0 e chi 0 by i r r. So, these are the two equations which you can use to obtain the values for RS and CS for your snubber design when you want to do it for the minimum voltage spike. Now, um, we did this uh, design based on limiting this uh, ratio E1 by E. We can also do this design with the perspective of uh, uh, limiting this uh, dV by dT average which is your E1 by T1. Because when we discussed your devices we saw that uh, several devices have got limits on the rate of change of voltage across them. And uh, so, by the snubber design we would like to limit this rate of change. So, we can also do the design with the objective we want to limit this dV by dt. So, then we follow the similar procedure, uh, but we use the equations uh, for your what we had obtained for your dV by dt average. And uh, we will be using this normalized uh, your expressions which is dV by dt by omega 0 e. So, same procedure we uh, take chi as a parameter and uh, zeta we keep on varying and we keep substituting and depending on the range of zeta we use the corresponding function for zeta less than 1 we use this function for zeta greater than 1 we use uh, this function and when zeta equal to 1 when we use this function. So, like that we can obtain these plots this is your uh, dV by dt average by E omega 0 this is the normalized dV by dt plot uh, with your chi this chi as a parameter and with uh, your plotted with respect to damping factor your zeta. So, these are the nature of the plots that you are going to get. Now, again here also we see the same thing that at certain points these curves are becoming minimum and uh, we can note down the corresponding points. So, we can note down these points ok and uh, the whatever is uh, the corresponding values of uh, your uh, zeta 0 uh, can be denoted as zeta 0 and this can be denoted as dv by dt 0 by E omega 0. So, like that you will be having several of uh, these and you can note down all those values corresponding values. So, 
by noting down all that then we get another set of values where your this average dv by dt function uh, is uh, minimum and we do this plot as before with initial current factor chi 0 uh, but uh, for that corresponding values of zeta 0 that we had obtained from the previous set of plots we do this plotting and then dv by dt 0 by e omega 0 and then using this values of uh, zeta 0 and chi 0 you solve uh, you also substitute in the expressions for e 1 by e and you obtain that graph of e 1 by e 0. So, now we can also use these set of plots to do this number design and uh, here the procedure that uh, you are supposed to follow is again you estimate these IRR and LP you find out E for your converter and you choose CS you choose the capacitance that is uh, going to be suitable. Now, when we do a design then many times uh, we, we may have a limit on how much CS we can use there okay the capacitor that we can use. So, you may choose the value of Cs that uh, you uh, want to put and uh, you calculate the corresponding value of omega 0 because that is the natural frequency um, and you already have an estimate of your LP. Then you choose the dv by dt average or rather what is, is the allowed rate of change that you can put there and you normalize it. So, you calculate this and then further what you do is that that you uh, find uh, this value on the plot whatever you have calculated you find the corresponding value and you uh, read the corresponding values of uh, chi 0 and uh, zeta 0. So, let us say for example, you found out this value you calculated this value and then you find out the corresponding values of zeta 0 and chi 0. Once you have obtained this then you use this expression to obtain your value of R s. So, that is how you do the snubber design for limiting your d v by d d. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that we assume that the parasitic inductance is known, reverse recovery current is known and the blocking voltage is known for this number design. Then we use the set of plots that I have shown you here uh, to do this number design and uh, uh, you can do the design as uh, to trying to limit the spike voltage or you can also do it uh, with the objective of limiting dv by dt the rate of change of voltage across the device. Thank you.